Okay. pizza while I think of some lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Stanley Stevenson Byrne. Most people know me as Fox Stevenson. Uh, I was born in London and I live in a city in the north of England called Leeds, but uh, I'm not here very often. <laughs> There's nothing that needs to be said. We can pretend we'll stand like these walls and make them again. I couldn't tell you exactly what my sound is because at this point all I do and it's kind of self-indulgent and I'm and but I'm proud of it in a way um, is I just do whatever the hell I think sounds good um, and if it doesn't sound good to me then that's then that nothing else matters hey 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 come on Stan you better than this I'm this is this is another problem with like traveling all the time is I don't get a chance to keep playing guitar. There was a point, like a couple months back, where I was actually starting to get okay. I mean, it's, it's shit, but I have a feeling it'll actually work really cool in the track. You want to make the music that would be your favorite music, or at least that's what I want. I want to make my favorite song. I want to make the best thing I've ever heard. People kind of say you shouldn't, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit conceited to like your own music. Like why? Like, no, you should make the music you want and then you should own it. You, you know, that's, that's, that's powerful. And that's, that's truly honest too. So I like the verse for sure. Sounds right. It sounds like it's not trying too hard. I mean, I like it, but I don't love it. I don't know if I got it in the year 2000 or maybe 2001, but there was a um, there was a PlayStation game called Music 2000 that I guess came around at the turn of the century and was basically a loop-based uh, DAW music producing software-ish that I used to make uh, beats on my PlayStation way, way, way back when. Um, and I guess I must have been around uh, seven, six or seven when that came out. I remember there was a time where I wasn't really doing anything on computers and I was just in uh, like pop punky bands and things. Uh, actually, the the street I grew up on in Leeds. More later on, um, I formed. A, well, I didn't. I joined a band that was made up of um, uh, two people who lived on my street who were a guitarist and a drummer. Um, and I kind of muscled my way and said, "I'm the singer now." <laughs> um, and they 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 were like, "Yeah, okay, man, sure." I don't know if there was always a, if there was ever a time where I wasn't involved with dancier music when I was a lot younger. I used to be a, I used to be a break dancer I guess that was like my main thing I would go and I would break dance I always liked the the quite big drum sounds that, that the break dancing tracks had and so that was always something that stuck in my mind my first real like explosive um, milestone will have been when Liquicity first picked me up before that I was releasing music on a 
a website called Newgrounds on their audio portal, and I had some success. I guess I was having maybe like a thousand to five thousand views on different tracks. the The feature of Newgrounds was that the music itself was Creative Commons licensed. It meant that people could use that music in their videos without worrying about it being a a copyright infringement. And so um, some free runners used one of my pieces of music in one of their videos. <laughs> Maris from Liquidity, it was just Maris back then, and he saw that and said, hey, can I up upload this on my channel? He hit me up on MySpace, and uh, and I was like, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> and um, that was when I went from 1,000 to 5,000 views to having about 150,000 in, uh, in a week. In terms of including my voice in my songs, it was never something where I went, oh, I should do that. It was, it was just like, why am I not doing that? I'll just do that next. I, I guess Tears and Rain, which was uh, which is something I released on YouTube that never actually got a release release, but is still there on YouTube, which was a Stan SB track. I um, released that as the first thing with my vocals on it and recorded it with like a terrible microphone and had to affect it loads so that it would even sound like close to uh, passable. This time. I think at that point I kind of went, whoa, loads of people like, like my music and uh, they want to hear more. I'll make more. And I didn't think about it in any other terms than that. I was not even going to university yet. I was not. I, this was the year where we were preparing for university and I have all these doors opening. So I'm spending a lot of time making music and not a lot of time on my studies. And not, you know, um, I, and I had pretty heavy A levels. I did uh, chemistry and maths and biology. So like I was, I, you know, they were things I had to study. I didn't. I like, I didn't, I didn't, I flunked them all. And I, I'm sorry to any of my teachers whose averages I brought down, but I, I was chasing something. What I'm doing right now in, in 2019 is, is releasing music that some people aren't recognizing as club music or, or, or it's, me, it's me coming off the back of doing a load of a load of shows where I felt like I had to be something I wasn't um, and me going well if I have to try and be something I'm not and I'm already trying a little bit to be like that and it's already making me feel uncomfortable then I'm not gonna do it at all I'm just gonna do me if you think of any any of your favorite bands or your favorite singers or anything um, and you know you think of one of their albums or, or like three of their tracks, they're not all at the same tempo. They're not all drum and bass tracks. I mean, like they're not, they're not genre tracks. They're just songs and the instrumental fits the song. I just want to make a song that has a convincing instrumental and those two things live together and they fit together in a cool way. And you don't really think about it anyway. And the interesting thing though, is that when people start deciding that they like something, they you, they might not realize it, but they're also deciding for themselves, kind of subconsciously almost, I think, they're deciding that they don't like certain other things. And that is sad. Kind of trying to come to terms with what I am and what I should be musically and where I need to go. Um, it's hard to to. It's. I mean, it sounds so stupid and, and so small, but it's scary putting out music like this when I'm. You know, I'm getting bookings for DJ sets where I need to play something you know, heavy and stuff, or, you know, having people who are just straight up drum and bass heads who like me because I make drum and bass sometimes and, you know, they're allowed to. I'm not, I'm not telling anyone that they're wrong or anything. It's just, there's a, there's a lot of fear that goes into a project like this where you're doing something that is quite different from what you've done. I'm not 21. I'm not 20 or, you know, I'm not as young as I once was. Making a risk like this is, you know, it could be a setback that I could reel from for a really long time, and um, and I and I'm not just on my own. You know, I've got I've got managers and I've got people who rely on 
Fox Stevenson to continue on and keep making money because it's part of their income and things like that. It's a lot of pressure. Um, I'm just trying at the moment. I'm just trying to get back to what it is I am at my at my core, and that's when I'm over there and I'm just fucking around making shit. <laughs> I want to talk about the future. Um, anybody who's followed me for a really, really long time or done some digging on kind of what makes me tick and what I'm about um, has known that for a really long time I've wanted to go live um, in terms of and like play my music live to people. I don't think there was a point where I had decided that I needed to do the live band now. I've always wanted to. I mean, go back to the anyone out there EP. I wanted to make a live band off the back of that. We had rehearsals. We had rehearsals for the Stan SB live act. Let's do it. Without trying to give away my edge with the live band, I have tried to keep it simple visually. Um, I think that there's a lot of really cool stuff that people have done with lots of different technology on stage with, with various live bands and things. But I think that at the core of, of any live act is, is there are only really three things, and that's drum kit, guitars, vocals and a front man which is always really important and that's something that has been missing in a lot of um in pretty much every kind of uh live iteration of dance music in the last few years you know the the, the people who are actually the artist are not the most important person on stage that's such a shame like you need that for, for some song for songs to mean anything you have to be the songs you have to be that artist like so we've got We've got Dan on drums, um, Dan Sawyer. Yeah, I met him when we were maybe about 10, 10 years old. We kind of just gone on our musical journeys and sailed, sailed through. I don't know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Buster, I knew through the internet, through, um, through Faint, Andy Who. Uh, Buster, Bruce Charles is his real name. I play guitar for Stan in the Fox Stevenson Life Project. The first time I ever met him, we went to McDonald's. He's got this cheeseburger and he looks around and he goes, I think, uh, I, think I could eat this cheeseburger in one bite. And I go, oh, I don't know, maybe. And by the time I get to about that part in the sentence, I look at him and it's in his mouth. And there's a, a girl behind him, look at him, absolutely horrified at what he's doing. And he's there and he's like, mm -hmm. These are These two are, at this point especially, uh, my closest friends. My God! We all know each other's shit in the fact that like Dan knows that I'm I can be uptight and I know that Dan can be the opposite of uptight. He'll try and blame me for staying up till 5 a.m. But he's definitely a bad influence in that respect. He'll keep me up till 5 a.m. and then make me think that it was all me. Dan is one of the strangest individuals I've ever met in my life. He's an amazing musician and uh, I feel very humbled to have the opportunity to play with him on the regular. Last month or the month before, it was like, okay, we've waited long enough. We've been trying to make the live band thing happen. We need... We need, we need a rehearsal and like a strict, just a strict period of time to commit. Yeah, we went to Scotland to really streamline and finesse the live set. And I think before we went, we had like an idea. So we got there and um, we, sat, we spent a whole day setting up. All right, I think we're pretty much set up, right? I got my little studio set up in here, got my, woo. and yeah, it's gonna be controlling from in here. The last two weeks went by very quickly because we were waking up, playing the set, playing some, playing Smash Brothers, and going to bed. <laughs> 
that was basically it. That was about it. Like by the end, we we know the set really, really well. I'm sat here on a hill waiting for Dan and Buster, and uh, these cows are just staring at me. We're in the wrong neighborhood, <laughs> boys. No, no, they're coming for <laughs> us. <laughs> <Stop> everybody. <laughs> ah! Currently, we're in a stage of trying to get better, of course, trying to get really, really tight. A section of a song, you can play it one way, or you play it as it is and then you can play it again, the exact same, but change, just like, it could even be your mentality. In terms of what I would like to do in the future, I would like to make this project my priority. It's a dream, playing guitar, it's like when Dan mentions he just, just wants to drum, that's like how I feel about guitar and the thing I enjoy doing the most in the whole world, you know, like just playing guitar and I could sit there and just get lost in it for hours and hours. Yeah, it's, it, it's scary that it might not be liked, but I mean, the worst of the worst case is that people hate this album and they hate the idea of it going live and I and I go use my skills in another way, hopefully. I, f I do often feel like a bit of an idiot for, for even bothering to kind of like shake my world up like this because, I mean, what? I, I, I've got a job that is amazing and, and, and I get to go play shows, I get to go be a DJ, I get to make music and this is my life and it's amazing and I'm super thankful for it and yeah, I could be the stupidest person in the world for trying to, <laughs> for doing something that shakes the foundations of my, of my security in that. But I can't help it. I've always been, I've always wanted to do it, and it's, and it's, it's what I want to try. Um, this is still Fog Stevenson. That's the thing is this doesn't I don't feel like I've been become something that I have never been I feel like I've amplified a part of Fox Stevenson that is at the core of it But I mean I love the sound of big drums and big bass like that's that's there too like I love melodies I love big drums. I love big bass and I love singing over it and that is the live band um and we're just trying to bring that through in a different form. And if, and if I can connect with my audience from that stage and sing and get this right, then I don't see why it can't have everything that you would go to see my DJ set for and more. There are sections in the live, in the live set that are as heavy as I've ever gone in a DJ set but there are also sections that are much more laid bare and much more real and vulnerable and honest. And that's at the end of the day, what else do we have? <laughs> <laughs>